Today we have gathered to address a critical aspect of IT infrastructure for BFSI organizations. And uh, as BFSI companies accelerate their digital transformation drive to fuel continuous innovation and seize new market opportunities, uh, we are seeing that their reliance on data centers has grown exponentially. But how equipped are the data centers to accommodate the advanced computing, data-centric, and AI-ready infrastructure requirements of today's modern VFSI workloads? And how to enable them to handle the rapid advancement in AI and ML? And the advanced computing needs are some of the aspects that we will be covering in the session today. So, and we encourage you to actively participate by submitting your questions in the chat, uh, in the Q&A section, which you will find at the bottom of the platform. Uh, throughout the sessions, uh, you know, please feel free to ask your questions and we will take them up during uh, the later part of the session, uh, during the Q&A. And before we dive into the key discussion points, let's take a moment to welcome our speakers and set the stage for today's conversation. Please join me in welcoming Gitesh Mahajan, Business Head Data Center Services at SIFI Technologies, and Girish Dhawale, CTO Data Center Services at SIFI Technologies. Over to you, Gitesh and Girish. Uh, Gitesh, uh, you can start from here. Thank you uh, very much, Shipra, for the quick introduction. And uh, I would like to thank you all for taking your time and attending this session. I hope my screen is visible. Shipra? Yes, sir, it's okay. visible. Yeah, it's okay, visible. thank you. Thank you very much. So we'll we'll start with a quick uh, presentation uh, with, the, with the agenda highlighted here. So we would be talking about BFSI's business priorities and technology demands. We will be talking about the movement of or transformation of technology uh, in line with uh, the changes that are happening uh, in terms of technology advancement and business priorities. We'll showcase growth of AI and the, how data centers are geared up to support AI workloads, building blocks of the AI ready data center. And in the end, how CFI has stitched the entire solution uh, to power the BFSI industry using the latest technology or upcoming technologies. To start with, uh, it, it's very important to understand, particularly BFSI, because BFSI sectors uh, is the largest, uh, and I would say first user of any technology transformation that happens uh, in, the, in the country today, right? So uh, what drives that transformation or what that drives the technology demand is the requirement from the business. So when we talk about the business priorities, Today, BFSI customers have gone from single product offering to diverse product portfolio, whereby, you know, typically banks, you know, then they're not only in transaction, they would like to get into uh, various insurance, digital payments, and other services as well. And what has, what has, with the technology growth and digital adoption, what has become more important is customer centric uh, services. So, acquisition of customer retention of customers, their you know, unique experience, addressing issues, continuous improvement, all those things are, are the top priority for any BFSI company today. And you know, with, the, with the latest news, uh, those are coming in the market, compliances are, are more and becoming more and more important. RBI has been very, very vigilant about how the transactions, infrastructure, and the complete observability is is monitored and maintained uh, by the BFSI organizations, so as uh, IRD and SEBI. So meeting those compliance requirements uh, is not only from the backend perspective now because it is directly affecting the uh, business operations as well uh, with the new regulations coming into the picture. So. Uh, compliance ready has has become the business priority, not the backend priority now. Digital security, multi-channel accessibility, financial inclusion, and most important, neo banking. What we mean by neo banking is a complete digital uh, banking experience that some of the banks are offering today. So in Western world, you will find a lot of banks only offering online services, 
today in india we we have seen payment banks uh, you know starting that mode of operations slowly and steadily you will see more and more digital adop- adoption happening in the entire banking system and personalized solution so in how personalized solutions are offered to them in terms of addressing specific queries their preferences achieving their financial goals so all those uh, products stitched together is what bfsi company wants to offer to the market today and how it translate into technology if you look at so i will not get into more details uh, but you know from the header itself you'll get to know that digital first platform has become the uh, you know most crucial aspect of how you connect with the user so digital platforms are getting designed customized digital platform uh, that enables interaction between the bfsi and the end users right so how the interaction happens through mobile apps internet portals ivrs apis so all those things are uh, technology enabling the businesses how do we better the user experience with uh, you know ai so ai is everywhere today and, you know specifically in insurance sector i think ai is used heavily in data analytics uh, chatbots have become become you know very very common now every uh, company is using chatbots for interaction with user because there are millions of millions of users and you have to ensure that you address each and every query uh, as soon as possible so chatbots are playing very very critical role uh, in the entire technology landscape regulatory compliances and cyber security are almost synonymous regulatory compliances focuses more on the cyber security these days where cyber security has become the prime most uh, criteria to evaluate uh, strength of the entire it infrastructure apart from that uh, there are blockchains being used for audit trails and many ai driven tools uh for compliances uh adherence and kyc's uh, gdpr compliances all those things are coming into the picture from the risk management perspective uh, analytics again ai machine learning is playing very very critical role uh and what is happening eventually to cope up with this or to meet the demand from the business or users coming all the legacy systems needs to be transformed or modernize to adopt new digital framework that includes uh, cloud saas services uh, and uh, cyber security network as a framework so in technology today you have to move uh, from your older system to the newer system and ai is literally everywhere including talent acquisition and retention and financial inclusion with the mobile banking digital payments uh, branches solutions biometric so what what nutshell what we see today the entire business priorities or business growth uh, is driven by technology enhancement and technology adoption and that is where i think it is very very important how do we stitch together the business priorities and the uh, uh, you know it architecture of your organization so you, we may talk about uh, the earth wide uh, you know it architecture it has been centralized on premise uh, typically you know you will have multiple data centers on premise uh, dc and dr uh, they were a little slow to adopt uh, to the latest advancement in the system large spars and horizontally they were not vertically scalable most of the operations were manual inter- and not interconnected so a, a entire infrastructure that was designed because it was in house uh, it could not meet the regulatory uh, aspects uh, or regulatory changes that are happening uh, you know uh, with the technology advancement <laughs> sorry for that and uh, uh, <clears throat> the new latest technology development that is happening in the market but what we see now today the digital it environment has completely transformed where we see distributed workloads uh, specifically hybrid it where you see cloud edge colocation hosting on premise solution so everything is stitched together creates the uh, hybrid it 
uh, infrastructure and solutions. It is simple, scalable, agile, and flexible. Why it is important? Because as digital adoption is increasing, more and more people are participating into digital transactions, uh, digital interaction with the companies. Your infrastructure needs are increasing. So you need a scalability uh, you know, across your entire IT architecture. You, the entire management, and because, because of the scale, increase in scale, everything has to be automated and SLA-based operations. Why SLA-based operation? Because earlier it was more of a headcount-based head operation, uh, wherein uh, we'll, we'll size the operations team based on how many number of people are supporting. But today, it's all about how much SLA, what SLA we want to achieve, what is the business uptime or uh, application uptime that we're looking at. So it is all uh, you know, 99.995%, 99.999%. That kind of SLA operations are defining uh, the demand uh, from the uh, you know service providers connecting multiple sites because the growth is happening across India in various cities whereby you need uh, you know sites for local processing and it is very important that all these things are connected together and the data has to be available in all sites the security is important BCP disaster recovery compliance ready. And not uh, last but not the least, with the so much of compute, power demand is increasing, and it's 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 very much important that we take care of our environmental responsibility as well. So the entire growth has to be green and sustainable, and that's what we we are bringing you today. How we have built this AI ready data center architecture, and we have Mr. Girish Dawle. Chief Technology Officer uh, for working for CIFI. Uh, Girish, over to you uh, for your next slides. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Gitesh. Yeah. And uh, uh, good afternoon, everyone. So uh, it's a good time to speak on the AI-ready data centers. So when we talk about the AI-ready data centers, that comes to, uh, through the two aspects. Point number one, is uh, AI ready data centers is as a customers are going towards the AI. So mostly we see now the racks which are earlier used to have a three kilowatt, four kilowatt, or six kilowatt uh, kind of uh, per rack loading has now gone up to forty kilowatt and beyond. Okay, so when we say the AI ready data centers, one is is the data centers which are coming are able to meet this kind of uh, high density requirements that is point number one point number two is uh, earlier the data centers are mainly towards the standalone buildings so from standalone buildings now it is becoming as a campus so earlier our data centers are built for 12 megawatt sites 8 megawatt sites now everybody is talking about 100 megawatts 200 megawatts now when such kind of a scale is coming uh, in india then is your data center is only depend on the people and the process or you have another tools which you are using. So that is where this is the AI evolution which we are bringing into a data center operations as well as in the data center built. So the when we talk about the uh, data center operations having the AI ML tools inbuilt into the systems, we uh, talk about the three phases. First phase is the connected. What is mean by the connected that we have a super critical equipment, you have a active equipments, you have a passive equipments, you have a network and the infrastructure equipments, how better they are connected for the real time visibility, alarm management, as well as it gives you the analysis. So this is the first phase where the BMS, ERP, all those systems which are established. The second phase is the predictive. In the predictive, it is more related to the analytical approach. That means on the top of the BMS, you are getting a lot of insights from the equipment in terms of the alarms, in terms of the real-time data. Are we tracking those data in terms of the performance of that equipment? That comes as an analytical phase. So actually the database which is getting collected, that database you are analyzing and from that analyzing you are bringing the reports forward okay which indicates that are you within the range of the acceptability or it is beyond where you need to take the actions so that is the predictiveness which we are bringing so what we are currently doing 
is we have built a AI ML module on the top of it, on the top of the BMS. And evenly, the equipments which are not getting directly monitored, we have the IFC tags which has been installed on those equipments. And when the technician or someone who goes in front of the equipment with the NFC enabled mobile, the checklist appears over there. He has to just plug those details and submit those details where the data is getting analyzed and the reports are getting published. And from the predictive, we are going to cognitive. So in the cognitive, the data centers are more predominantly uh, run through the AI systems where they will uh, take, uh, they will give you the suggestions in terms of what you need to do in terms of the MTBF, MTTR. So we are not limiting ourselves towards the SLAs now. We want to go ahead and work on the MTTR and MTBF of the equipments. So this is where the journey has started and we are uh, advancing each and every data centers into this. Now, what is the benefit of this AI ML for the co-location business? One is the scalability. Scalability in terms of the capacity. So what we propose is for a customer, once he take a X uh, square feet of the space and Y KW of the power, he is always interested to understand that what is his consumption and what is his utilization. So we want to provide this kind of uh, inputs to the customer through a real time as well as through a reporting mechanism where he can see what how is scaling or how he is utilizing and when there is a decision for the additional capacity which he can book with CIFI. Security, the most important component. Currently, we are talking about the physical security of nine layers, but going beyond that is the how the physical security and digital security can be worked in the hybrid mode so that there will not be any security breach at the data center. ESG, as we have already touched upon, that uh, environment social governance is the most important component now. One is definitely you are using the data centers are power guzzlers. You are using a lot amount of energy over here. Then how you are going to reduce your carbon footprint? What kind of abatement strategies you have? So in CIFI, we have 99 megawatt renewable power already installed and we are uh, into the power purchase agreement for additional capacity. Now, this power which is getting generated is getting consumed for my data center loads so that the carbon footprint will get reduced. My all the new data centers which are coming are with a zero water discharge and is having a lot of uh, uh, green uh, uh, improvements which we are bringing over here. We are going for the IGBC certification of those data centers for the gold as well as platinum. Then the future ready. So future ready is uh, what the customer requires. Customer requires uh, the continual growth into his capacity so that his business should not get a constraint in terms of the capacity bottleneck. We are building the campus like my Rapale campus is started with one building and now we have five operational data centers and two data centers are in constructions. We are giving the indefinite growth for all our customers who are hosted inside our data center. And on the global compliance, we are globally complied. Whatever the, all the compliances right from your TI 942, tier three, uh, rated three certification, or it is uh, ISO 50K, 20K, all those certificates, what is required to the customers are available to those data centers. Now, the important aspect of going with the campus management is the low latency connect. Like I mentioned that I'm providing the uh, amount of power as well as enough space for the growth. But what is about the network? So on the network front also, we are giving in-campus connectivity. So that in-campus connectivity is giving the lowest latency so that all the BFSI load, if they want to move it from one, uh, uh, one of the tower or one of the floor to another tower or other floors, the lowest latency is maintained and AIML based operation as I uh, touched upon already. Now, the definitely the question comes that how these equipments are getting connected on the AI ML platform. So in data centers, the infrastructure equipments for the cooling as well as on the power. 
So all those are connected on the BMS platform. And from the BMS platform, the with the IoT gateways, it is going to the AIML uh, software, which is in-house developed by the CFI and which is helping us to provide uh, uh, all those analytical approach or the predictive approach over there. And those equipments which are not connected, we have installed the IoT sensors on the top of it to so bring the data okay which is not easily available through bms so data is coming through the iot sensor so this is the broad topology of the aiml architecture what we are using now how we are going to use the aiml in the data center so first is real time visibility in terms of the space rack power cooling cross connects so these are something which customer is very much interested in too customer wants that if the infrastructure is installed in CFE, then its life cycle study of that equipment and its installations, he's interested and CFE is ready to give that real time visibility to them in terms of the space, power, cooling, as well as cross connects. Predictability. In the predictability, we are working beyond SLA, going with the MTBF and MTTR, RCA, and the service stats with a preventive maintenance records and the AMC contract realization, everything will be available in basis of the predictability. Measurability in terms of the operation measurability, in terms of the resource capacity utilization and KPI based service contracts. So that we are going to bring. Now these, all those modules will be available to the customers for their compliance, for their audit, for their visibility. And the last is the efficiency that how best you are using your infrastructure, how best you are using. So you have contracted 100 kilowatt of the power with CP. What is your utilization? What is your peak? What is your uh, low? And what is your average power utilization? How you can utilize your contracted capacity to the betterment that we are going to give uh, the suggestions uh, through this modeling. Now, the comprehensive security framework. So when we talk about all about the infrastructure, it's AIML. Important is also related to the comprehensive security framework. So we talk about the confidentiality, integrity, accessibility that is always there. And we also have the centralized security command center. Now in the centralized security command center, what is that unique we are doing is we are also monitoring the weather that is the heat wave we are monitoring the seismic. So any heat wave uh, which has been uh, seen on the weather reports, accordingly, the informations are passed on to the data centers to take the precautionary actions. And the focus is always there on the cooling capacity. And same goes with the seismic activity. If any seismic uh, activity is there, then we immediately work on uh, with the site team that how better they are equipped and what is the outcome of that. So this is, we are connected with the incident management. We talked about the security layer. So there are 10 layers of physical security, which is not only physical presence of the guard, but it is the physical security, which is hybrid with the electronic security, which talks about the biometric access control, as well as the CCTV monitoring, that all has been incorporated into the physical, uh, in, uh, into this 10 layer of uh, security. Surveillance and the risk assessment, TVRA reports, and the third party audits. These are the most important aspects which we are following. And uh, the security and uh, the security controls. So, uh, as I mentioned, that uh, different type of uh, the systems, electronic systems, are getting uh, uh, incorporated into the security, so that uh, we will have a very comprehensive approach towards the security framework. The next slide talks about uh, the ESG focus. So, as I mentioned in the beginning, that uh, we already have the. 99 megawatt installed capacity of solar plus wind hybrid. So by precise 45 megawatt solar and 54 megawatt wind capacity, which has been installed. And we have a real time monitoring at uh, the Mumbai data centers, where you can see how much is the power is getting generated and how much is the power is getting consumed. So what is uh, the replacement of the conventional power with the green power? You can able to see that. Second thing is when we build the new data centers now, the all which we called as a gen 3 designs so these gen 3 designs are definitely going ahead with uh, the green building concept the green building certifications 
and all the new requirements like my cooling systems also the chilled water temperature itself is uh, 17 and 18 degrees centigrade so the lowest pv we achieve by adopting all the new technologies over here and we have a, a future roadmap which talks about re100 carbon neutrality by 2030 and uh, exploring options for the re penetration across pan india disease so that is also going on on a big way yeah now uh, we uh, we spoke about the infrastructure we spoke about the esg drives we spoke about the ai but how we will be geared up uh, for my new data centers for the ai load which is coming from the customers so now we are seeing that uh, uh, earlier 8 kilowatt rack 6 kilowatt rack or 3 kilowatt rack is getting replaced with the 40 kilowatt racks okay so density is increasing when the density is increasing the conventional cooling methodology that is below the false floor having cold line and hot oil concept that is falling short of the requirement of high density racks so now our data centers has been geared up to provide the rear door heat exchanger cooling direct to chip cooling or liquid immersion cooling so we have these technologies has been developed so any customer any bfsi customer need that to install the gpu based rack or ai ml based rack requirement of any of uh, type of the cooling mechanism we are ready to provide into our all new data centers network connectivity as i mentioned that uh, being a CFE predominantly from the basics it is a network company we have the terrestrial fibers we have uh, the cable landing stations uh, one is in Mumbai and another in Chennai coming up. So on the network front, we have uh, enough intelligence and enough experience available. So any connectivity from the DC to DR or DC to NDC or DR to NDR is easily provided by the CFE with the lowest latency because we have uh, express routes which uh, uh, CFE is providing. And the second most important is in-campus connectivity. So in-campus, like uh, in Rabale campus, as mentioned that five towers are currently operation, two more are coming up and two more is uh, in the future. So here in in-campus connectivity, without crossing the public road, we have the tunneling below uh, where we are carrying the fibers and we very low latency at a nanosecond latency that uh, we can provide the indefinite expansion uh, to the load, IT load of the BFSI customers. And uh, most of the private and public banks are using that from one tower to another. So this is an another unique advantage of CIFI's campus. And the same is applied with the, is applied with the Chennai as well. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, that's all on the technology front for my side. Over to you, Gitesh. Yeah, hi. Thank you, Girish. That was a very insightful session. Um, now we'll quickly, uh, because we are already late in the session, so we'll quickly wrap up. That's very much our data center footprint spread across various key cities. When we talk about CIFI data centers, uh, we offer unique advantages uh, to customers as uh, Girish has mentioned. We are primarily, we started with the business of network and internet services. From there, we have grown and we have added data center portfolio and managed services. So CIFI uh, is in a unique position that offers enterprises end to end when it when to end services when it comes to it infrastructure managed services because today as we have uh, as we have discussed data center is not only about having it hardware inside your data center server hall it's a connected uh, landscape connected with cloud connected with saas service provider connected with your multiple locations connected with your edge data centers right so CFE is in a unique position to offer that solution, uh, network-rich ecosystem in a scalable data center. So that's a unique advantage that we offer. All our data centers are RASP-based uh, and future-ready infrastructure. Uh, across India, as I've, as I've shown, 14 data centers in 190 megawatt IT power. We plan to expand it to 300 megawatt by 2025. 
campus is scalable to 600 megawatt with bts capabilities 10 layers of security which girish has briefly talked about the most important is we are equally concerned about uh, our environmental responsibility and 99 megawatt is already installed and additional capacity up to 231 megawatt is already contracted in the delivery phase we use ai ml led operations to achieve 100% uptime and we have proven track record to deliver uh, deliver best uptime in the industry when it comes to data center these are these are some of the certifications uh, all our data centers are certified for uh, required certification be it iso soc certification tier certification rated 3 uh certification we are also meti cloud m panel uh, data center and uh, so we are our hyderabad data center is first uh, nvidia dgx ready certified data center our mumbai campus is going through dgx certification and probably in a month or so we'll be able to announce that entire mumbai campus is certified for nvidia dgx ready certification This is a glimpse of our data centers across various cities. Mumbai zero three, Rabale campus being the largest campus. Two forty megawatt is what we are designed for, but with new AI advancement that is coming up, which allows us to power more within the same space. Uh, it can virtually scale scale up to five hundred megawatt. Uh, Noida zero two, uh, Chennai zero two, Bangalore zero two, and Hyderabad zero two. These are the campuses spread across various key cities which you can avail services from. So this is the last slide, but the most important slide which I would like to touch upon. Uh, when it comes to BFSI, uh, we are the clear leader in the market. Forty-two percent of the CP revenue is generated from financial services vertical, and we are proud to mention that sixty percent of the financial transactions in India are uh, are offered through CP's integrated digital IT ICT services. We have executed multiple projects. Uh, you know for bfsi customers uh, data center project migration project cloud project and with the virtue of that today we are serving india's top 5 banks from our data centers top 10 banks in india using our integrated data center and network services 80 plus leading bfsi customers are hosted in cfi's data center world's most widely distributed postal system runs on network managed by cfi uh, and cfi has designed deployed and is managing infrastructure that runs in india's entire interbanking transactions so in a nutshell we'll see 15000 plus public sector bank offices we are connecting 27000 plus postal banks we are connecting 5000 plus cooperative banks we are connecting and serving through various modes 13000 plus branches of private sector and small banks we are connecting and service through our data centers public sector insurance companies are working with us payment bank stock exchanges so entire portfolio of bfsi customers uh, and we are proud to mention that we have happy happy uh, customer portfolio of bfsi and we are growing strongly in that thank you very much for uh, uh, that's all from my side from the presentation over to you shipra for the next round thank you kitesh that was a wonderful presentation giving us an insight into uh, uh, sifi's offerings uh, around data center and the kind of innovations uh, that you are undertaking and the spread of your uh, capacity as well okay so now it's time for a poll question uh, we will have three poll questions interspersed over the next um, half an hour or so as we proceed with the discussion so can we please have the first poll question on the screen so the question is what is your organization's top priority when it comes to it infrastructure you have a single uh, choice to make while you all of them might be your priorities but the top most priority of your organization when it comes to it infrastructure we will have the poll open for a few more seconds so in case anyone who hasn't participated in the poll please go ahead and uh, take the poll and uh, as we will be closing it soon
I think we are waiting a few more people to participate. And uh, then we can take the poll offline. Okay, do we have enough participants? Okay, great. So let's see what are the results of the poll. I cannot see the results. Uh, yeah, it's here. So the topmost priority is uh, enhancing cybersecurity measures followed by reducing operational costs. And third is upgrading legacy systems for better performance. So I don't know, uh, does it resound with you, Gitesh and Girish? Yes, yes, pretty yes, much. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. In line, okay. in line, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so so maybe we can uh, we can address some of you know, this particular issue when we come up uh, with the panel discussion. So I have with me Dr. N. Rajendran, Chief Digital Officer, Multi Commodity Exchange, and Anirban Guha, who is Head Risk Analytics at Aditya Birla Finance Limited. And I'll have Girish and Gitesh, both of you, join us back for the panel discussion. Great. Thank you so much uh, for taking our time, uh, Dr. Rajendran and Anirban, to join us uh, for this panel discussion. So let me get started with the, uh, you know, uh, the CIOs and the IT leaders first before I uh, get Girish and Gitesh to share their views as well. So Dr. Rajendra, maybe we can start with you. And if you really look at the rap and the space of artificial intelligence and machine learning, how well is your IT infrastructure equipped uh, to support these kind of technologies and the workloads uh, with these technologies? And what measures are you taking to ensure your data centers can handle uh, these advanced computing needs? Okay, thank you, uh, Sipra, um, asking these uh, uh, questions. And uh, hi, everyone. Um, if you take the uh, journey in the uh, data center area, because AI talks about various fields. If you Go get into the AI topic, it is widely everywhere AI is used. And already, if you see the thing, Gitesh and Greece has even described how this AI is used in the data center management also. So the AI you can see in two aspects. One, how to ensure the your securities where management and operations on the data center side. And another is how you can able to uh, Cope up your IT infrastructures, how you need to ramp up your IT infrastructures. Ideally, when you do the um, an AI based or anything analytical things, and then catch a computing powers, then the large volume of data processing, then you need to uh, ramp up your uh, infrastructures in terms of the capacity. While increasing the, the capacity, then definitely there is an environmental requirement. You need to have a more cooling because it will the heat uh, will more will be generated when you do the uh, large number of processing and the uh, high volume data center. So for that, it, you need to take care of your cooling systems and the uh, your scalability. How you want to horizontally, you need to scale. And the the approach is normally want to address the locus uh, the space. So the hyper model when you wanted to have it. If you have a, your own data center, then you need to have your co-location strategy where you need to have the better to expand your need immediately. Second, you need to see the how you can vertically increase the number of uh, 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 the computing equipment in same rank. That definitely that gives the getting a better cooling. And so that way uh, you will able to meet your requirement. I think with this, I just close uh, my comment now. Thank you, Dr. Rajendran. So Anirban, coming to you, uh, you are heading uh, risk analytics uh, at Aditya Birla Finance and considering, uh, so again, very heavy workloads, very, uh, you know, heavy computational workloads uh, this requires, including a lot of integration with the AI and ML. So 
how do you see uh, this impacting your current IT infrastructure requirements? You know, do you think it is currently well equipped to support these uh, these technologies? And uh, how are you handling this advanced computing needs uh, that that are there for uh, advanced analytics and AI ML kind of applications? Thanks for kind of uh, picking up this particular topic because mostly the discussion so far what we are having it is much more generic in a sense that at the data center how things are coming up. Now to be very frankly speaking uh, I am the user of data center the analytics being the user of data center and this is the discussion was going on because uh, I mean every other financial organization these days have realized that they cannot be a simple bank or NBFC and work like a financial institution. They have to think like a completely tech organization. And that is, I mean, everywhere, I mean, I mean, even looking into the chat, also people were putting that how CP is better than AWS. So if we think of that AWS, Amazon, their primary business was book selling. And while selling their books, they started their analytics, then they understood the importance of data. They understood the, the data center, data, data infrastructure, and building up on that, they have reached this kind of stage. Similarly for bank and financial institutions, it is absolutely depending upon what the experience they're providing to their customers. So whoever stays in Bombay and try to take the, the terminal to, the moment you turn from Western Highway, the, each pillar has an advertisement, get a loan in four seconds, five seconds, six seconds, second second, that way. So when we are talking about AI ML in a nutshell, what is the purpose of AI ML? I mean, if I can take some time to explain that. So basically just think of some customer, Just I'm just giving one of the example that they are looking for a loan. They just picked up their phone, going to a browser or the particular app for that particular organization. And they're just being asked that what is your name? What is your uh, mobile number? Maybe what is your PAN number? And that's it. And then they're asking that whatever the amount, whether 2 lakh, 3 lakh, 4 lakh, 5 lakh, whatever they're applying. And then within 4 to 5 minutes, maybe they're asked for click their selfie. And they are getting that what is their eligibility? What are they interested in now? Whether they are accepting or not. Just think of it that as an organization, what all in the background that is going on? First thing is going on that once the data capture has happened, all their relevant regulatory KYC checks, whether it is CKYC, VKYC, DKYC, all the regulatory checks are going on. The moment somebody is capturing a photograph, a deep learning algorithm is matching after asking for the KIC document, whether the image is getting matched or not. Then with the provided information and with the requested loan amount, I mean, the continuously back, I mean, back end, the probable income estimation model is kind of calculating the eligibility of the customer. And then eventually, looking into the eligibility, the requested loan amount, the rate of interest or the eligibility amount is kind of getting this, kind of popped up over there. So within four to five minutes, this entire exercise is happening. And just before maybe four to five years, if we think of how this procedure used to happen, minimum two weeks it used to take to apply for a loan to finally you get to know that I mean whether you are allowed to take that loan or not. And to come up with this kind of computation, the data is something that is we are completely leveraging. And more and more the database technology that we are going on. I mean, this is only the lending side that I am talking about, being part of the organ, the kind of organization I am. There could be several hundred others application of that. And alongside being a triple A rated organization, we are heavily regulated by RBI. Be it on the on, on our underwriting standard, being on our systems, being on our data security. So when we are, when you are the simple question, the one-liner question that you asked, 
that in your journey, in your whatever, uh, in your process, do you think that your data centers are ready for that? But unfortunately, the answer cannot be one-liner. It has to talk about the, the storing capability, the processing capability, the governance within that, and alongside the exactly the thing that people were talking about, the AI ML integration and the how soon the output can happen. And it is a constantly emerging area that everybody is coming up with different sort of data that when, if I talk about our selection model, if I talk about our underwriting model, that people are consuming demographic information, people are consuming bank statement information, people are consuming even for self-employed, their GST data, telecom data, social media data, that the constant the huge data consumption is going on. Today, people are, I mean, moving from the mainframe kind of setup to cloud-based system so that the faster processing can happen. We typically, we are so far at least, we are talking about AI and ML. We are not talking right now. We are not talking about generative AI kind of thing. But people in from the financial sector, the moment we go to, I mean, insurance sector or a kind of uh, investment. So when people are looking for a product, and that putting their queries over there, the query is previously, if we need to type, it used to give us a generic information. Now, a generative AI model is running behind. It will customize the information looking into the questioning pattern. It will try to predict the age of the person, the temperament of the person, the mood of the person with the kind of sentiment analysis that will go on simultaneously. Yeah. And then oh. they will try to pitch the current kind of product. Yeah. So currently, we all have to be data center wise at certain level. Otherwise, it is impossible to stay in the competition. Right. So in fact, the different components of data center that you mentioned, whether it is the processing power, the storage, uh, I will I will have uh, Girish and Gitesh talk more about that. And you mentioned that uh, currently the preparedness, like you said, is not that high. So how do you take that preparedness from where it is currently to um, to a high preparedness? Uh, because as you mentioned, when once we have uh, more organizations using generative AI large language models, uh, the the need for higher processing, higher capacity is just going to you know I don't even think double down, but rather it will increase ten uh, x the need for that. And I would like Girish and Gitesh to also bring in uh, comments by Dr. Rajendran and Arirban during their uh, uh, during their uh, you know once once they're giving their responses. Uh, but Girish, I want to specifically uh, come to you. Uh, and, you know, you spoke about the data center space where, uh, you know, Gitesh spoke about Sifi's offerings. Uh, uh, I want to understand from you that you have been in the data center space for over two decades now. So what are the kind of innovations and investments that Sifi is making to enable the AI landscape for the BFSI sector? And there you can also address, uh, you know, the points that were made by Dr. Rajendran and Anirban. Yeah. So uh, coming directly to the solution, see, as rightly mentioned, that uh, the high uh, computing is bringing uh, the high amount of heat load into the data centers. So if we look at uh, the chip designing in the phases, okay, now we are talking about uh, uh, the GPUs, which are uh, brought into the servers and which is used for the high computing. Now, what happens that when you are going from the conventional uh, uh, servers uh, to the blade chassis and from blade chassis to the GPU, the total heat generation or the density of uh, uh, the power utilized by each rack is increases. So what is important for a data center player is he need to cater three aspects. One is uninterrupted power. Second is the sufficient cooling to maintain the temperature and the humidity. And the third most important is the network connectivity. Now, how CIFI is geared up for this kind of a requirement? Point number one is all the new data centers which we are building are having 2,500 kg per meter square as a uh, the strength of the loading. 
Okay, so any high density racks having the load of 1000 kg, 1500, 2000 kg can be, easy, can be easily installed. Second thing is the floor to floor height for each data center hall is now 8.3 meters. That means each hall is almost 24 feet of the height. Now, what is the advantage of that? The advantage is the amount of air which we are circulating or the rejection of the heat from the servers can be easily handled. Third is the new technologies which now demanded uh, by the server manufacturers that as I mentioned in my presentation, that a rare door uh, heat exchanger, because where you can have a rejection of heat more efficiently than the conventional system, or uh, you have a chip level cooling, or you have a immersion cooling, that is where the servers are immersed into a, a dielectric uh, uh, liquid, and that liquid is uh, temperature is maintained through a separate refrigeration cycle. So all those technologies, the data data centers are capable to handle. So if anyone is having the hybrid requirement, if anyone is having only high density requirements, now the data centers are designed in such a phase that we can connect any type of a cooling system. We can provide the high density power to the server racks and the network connectivity is definitely with the carrier neutral uh, aspects and having the in-campus low latency network connectivity, I think we meet all such requirements which has been specified. Um, uh, thanks, Girish. And Gitesh, I was going uh, through your presentation and uh, it was uh, quite interesting. Now, uh, taking that further, uh, you know, you were, I was able to gauge the experience that SIFI has in the BFSI sector. So you must be hearing a lot from your customers as well uh, and when you go and meet them. So uh, how what, what kind of uh, requirements uh, that are you hearing from these customers and how do you see yourself aligning uh, with their priorities? And you also saw some of the priorities that came across in the poll. So are they kind of resonating with what you hear from your customers and how are you aligning with these? Yeah, sure. So, uh, you know, today customers are uh, more looking at how they can be ready for the future. Because from the experience, uh, all the VSI customers have, have learned that the traditional uh, IT landscape uh, may not be sufficient for them to adopt to the new technologies that are coming in. And the businesses are getting more and more aligned towards technology. So, Today, CIOs are not only you know responsible for managing the uh, IT landscape, but they are also equally uh, participating in the business decisions. They are equally responsible for increase in EBITDA, you know, in terms of financial decision making that have, that are happening in the organizations. So more more and more business and uh, IT is getting connected. So when customers particularly talk about data centers, they want to see how the data centers are future ready, which Giri just spoke about. And Anir, Anirvan, you know, briefly touched upon uh, how ready those data centers are for future technologies like liquid cooling that may come up or high density racks that are required, you know, in the, in the traditional cooling system. Not only that, as the world is more and more connected, towards each other, uh, even though banking may not be uh, using cloud to the extent where other enterprises are using, uh, but future roadmap is definitely there. So they would like to see how the existing campuses, data center campuses can help them achieve the lowest latency when they are uh, connecting to cloud for their hybrid workload in future how the service provider, data center service provider can help them with growth in IT infrastructure and manageability of the IT infrastructure over the period of time, how sustainable uh, the entire IT operations are. So all those things are very, very important uh, for uh, BFSI customers today in decision-making. 
And I think one of the biggest concerns uh, for the BFSI companies is the security and uh, the regulatory environment. And Dr. Rajendran, I would like to ask you about, uh, you know, if we if you look at uh, some of the recent notices issued and concerns highlighted by RBI and, you know, the ever evolving security and regulatory landscape, how do these requirements impact your data center strategy? You know, uh, uh, how critical they are and how do they impact your data center strategy? Regarding the uh, regulatory requirements, and all regulators have given a very prescribed and detailed requirements. Okay. And nowadays, many um, operators started providing the uh, compliance to the regulatory requirements. If the any provider accept this all this regulatory compliance in terms of uh, allowing third party auditor then uh, doing any time audit and keeping that uh, documents or uh, informations uh, to be verified which uh, so all those things and all if you are meeting uh, it is the there are two uh, two areas in data center one is the co-location another is the um, uh, the cloud based Collocations, there is no issues at all. You can hire a space and uh, remaining all the things you can able to manage with the help of the uh, co-location provider. Uh, that, that is the way most of the uh, uh, BFSI segment uh, uh, organization works with the uh, provider. In cloud also, it is opened up a lot of things and uh, the, clearly these frameworks are every regulator is given. And if you are meeting, then you can start using the cloud. But there it is the people are started doing very, uh, uh, maybe a cautious approach to start with the, uh, maybe uh, very peripheral applications trying to go to the things because otherwise we, if you are not going to connect with the uh, uh, public and your internal network, then you will not able to get a lot of advantages like now we are wanted to use AI and many things and all it has an interconnect between the public and the private networks. You need to establish the strategy and at the same time, you need to secure your systems also. So Anirban, uh, what is your take on that? And you did mention in your previous response about uh, security, um, especially the kind of data that uh, the BFSI organizations deal with. It's very sensitive data. Uh, do you think that kind of impacts the data center strategy and how do you go about your IT infrastructure? to be very frankly speaking i mean it is it is very much required it's because right now i mean whoever is accessing the data whoever if there is any kind of maintenance thing has happened any change of the table even some the variable name change the date the table name change everything should have a proper governance around that so um, i mean uh, just just to kind of bake slightly back to differ with one of the panelists because even AWS is kind of right now very heavily being used in the BFSI industry and uh, actually uh, that is a completely cloud-based and uh, the the access bank actually they spent around two years to develop their cloud COE the center of excellence to build the capability so that because the moment you are moving into the tech-based, the app-based information, there's a flood of information that is coming in. And within that, I mean, keeping your governance in place, the data infrastructure related governance in place, we are just talking about here the maintenance and the other governance, who is accessing the data, whether the data is not leaking outside, whether, because, our information security officer is one of the prime most person within this kind of financial organization who needs to understand the each and every activity almost almost each and every activity even if we are kind of taking any capability from our, i mean with any cloud provider any kind of data infrastructure is coming in place whether we are doing any proof of concept kind of testing the poc and all but each and everything has to be governed and signed off. So that is why, I mean, when we talk about the model cards, if any AI ML capability is coming into the picture, when we we'll, we have to publish several dashboards to track that 
everything is within the permissible range or not, then each and every permissions to kind of, uh, and it, it is not that everybody in the organization, we talk about data democratization, but that doesn't mean that everybody has all the permissions. And those permissions also need to be properly registered and recorded and signed off. So it, it's a it's a very, very regulated environment that any financial organization need to work with along with the scalability, yeah. the rapid scalability. And when we talk about the sustainability, it is one of the major part as well. The moment we are scaling up, our infrastructure also need to be kind of sustainable. Also then the regulatory side also, we need to constantly sh show that, I mean, we are within the control parameters of uh, our, I mean, typically from the banking organization is RBI, when it comes to insurance, it is IRDA. Yeah. So in fact, when it comes to like heavy regulated environments, like uh, the BFSI companies, I think one cannot stress enough on uh, the need for, uh, you know, how, for secure and uh, compliant uh, infrastructure. Um, so Girish, uh, what is your take on that? You heard Dr. Rajendran and Anirban. Uh, what is your take on the security and the governance aspects? And how do you ensure that your customer data is secure, protected, and that it remains compliant uh, to the regulatory needs of these organizations? Yeah, so in two aspects. One is when we talk about the security. security is uh, in the data storage it comes one is from the uh, network security aspects where uh, all those customers all those bfsi customers are having their different layers of the security like a firewall security we or the ddos security which they built in but addition to that where we talked about the physical security breach so when we physical security breach, you have the different layers of the security which has been built before you enter inside the data centers and reaching at uh, your server rack or reaching to your IT infrastructure. So that is the hybrid security, which is the electronic plus physical securities which are available. And all those 10 layers of securities are available for the CFI data centers. That is a uh, point, uh, that is the uh, answer to the first question. Uh, what was the second question uh, Anirban has asked? You are on mute, I think. I, I haven't asked any question, I guess. Uh, Shipra, you are on mute. Yeah, you are on mute. So yeah, so Anirban uh, didn't ask any questions. So the question from uh, my side was that uh, you mentioned about ensuring your customer data being secure, protected, and how it is compliant to the regulatory needs. And I think you kind of answered that yeah. uh, about so how just, you are doing that in yeah, just on uh, the uh, governance and the compliance because all those banks are uh, uh, requirement of the different certifications like SOC 1 certification, SOC 2 certifications and uh, all uh, related so when we uh, when we built the data centers the data centers are coming up with uh, the design certification that we call as a rated 3 certification or tier 3 certifications so data centers are certified for the rated 3 and the tier 3 certifications second thing is from the design when it comes to the operations then you required uh, the environment certifications like ISO 14K certification, TL 9000 certification, ISO 27000, that is OSHA certifications, or the business continuity plans, that is 22301 certification, or the energy conservation certification, that is 50K1 certification. Now, all those certificates, so the CFIs, all data centers are complied. Okay, and we continuously with the third party audits, we do the certification progress and also the uh, at a different intervals. So those uh, certificates are also get uh, uh, validated by the agencies. So from the governance point of view, from the compliance governance point of view, all the data centers are complied, all the data centers governance is in place. So, uh, Gitesh, anything that you would like to add to this on the security and the compliance aspect? And uh, after that, I'll move to uh, Dr. Rajendran and Arun Pan. I think uh, Girish covered it well, but uh, as you also touched upon very briefly uh, with recent action from uh, regulators, compliances and compliance framework is broadly, you know, covers the security framework. You know, majority of the portion is security and then other audit related 
uh, aspects. It has become more and more important uh, with the digital adoption uh, in India, uh, specifically, you know, high uh, util high usage of uh, UPI. Uh, more and more people who are you are now doing the digital transactions uh, in India today. So uh, compliances have become very very important. All uh, industry leaders and all in, uh, customers are equally concerned because it's no more only getting away with the penalty. It affects the businesses directly. Certain times, uh, new customer onboarding or certain operations, branch rollout, all those things will be put on hold with the heavy penalty. So uh, now businesses are also equally concerned about the compliances. So that's, that's something, you know, I think would be most critical for uh, any service provider uh, when they are servicing BFSI customers. And we truly understand because we are virtually serving almost 60 to 70% of the BFSI customers in India today. Right, right. Thank you for sharing that and, uh, right. you know, wonderful conversation. But I want to wrap up with a very uh, critical question uh, with the practitioners, Dr. Rajendran and Anirban. I would like your view on, um, first, Dr. Rajendran, um, as the CDO of, of, a, of a financial uh, a BFSI organization, what do you consider as the critical factors when selecting a data center provider and maybe, you know, the security, the sustainability? I mean, what, what would you consider as the top, key, uh, top uh, factors when you are choosing a data center provider? See, my priority first training of the scalabilities, how they can able to meet my on-demand requirements. Always that is the big challenges when you go to the outsource data center. That is one important. The second thing about the, definitely it is the, the security and the, because if, when you go to a digital mode and now the entire risk is on data, okay? The data, if data is the core for everything now. So we need to see how the, the uh, the the data center resiliency and how we can ensure the things our data is stored. Even if we need to see the thing 50 years, you need to be retained data. So how to see the things, the entire uh, resiliency of the data center, that is need to be done. Definitely the, uh, the compliance now becomes the foremost important in everywhere. The compliance have to be ensured. So I think these three things I'd like to uh, uh, take it uh, as a whenever um, looking for any uh, new data center or the looking for a partner for hosting the yeah. systems. Great, Anirban, with your kind of workloads, what would you what would be your criteria uh, for selecting a data center provider? See, I mean, on this thing, I will go again back to what UNICEF typically drives that the SDG framework also goes here: the sustainability, development, and growth. So. Our systems should be sustainable. I mean, it, it cannot, should not require high maintenance. And so that, I mean, whatever the position we are, it is sustainable because RBI asks for daily reports and the numbers that we are generating, there should not be any glitch in the entire process. That the first thing, then based on that, we should be able to scale our development. I mean, I mean, whatever, sorry, development means what we're trying to talk about the flexibility that the system should not be rigid that for any minor changes in the system, it needs to be kind of take a lot of time or we need to go back from scratch. So it needs to be flexible of any kind of changes. And then on the growth side, but Rajendran was also saying that it has to be scalable because every day the data, the business is scaling up, the uh, Data is scaling up, so the data system also need to be scalable. So these three things that we look into when we're looking into assessing a particular data center. Great. Thank you so much, Anirban. So Girish and Gitesh, uh, you know, we, uh, you know, scalability, uh, being able to, uh, being able to scale up, sustainability um, are some of, and of course, uh, compliance uh, to the. Red, Securities. Red and the security aspect. So these three are coming up again and again as well, the critical factors, uh, like Anirban and Raj, Dr. Rajendran mentioned about 
how they would select a, a data center provider. So Girish and Gitesh, any uh, closing remarks from your side, keeping all this in mind? Yeah, so I would like to say uh, what three, four things that you've highlighted, scalability, security, compliances. I would like to add interconnected also, right? Because we are into interconnected world today. So along with scalability, the interconnecting all the ecosystem of the digital platform. That is equally important because IT systems are distributed, uh, spread across various locations, and application needs to talk to each other. So in CP, we understand the importance of this evolving architecture and growing dependence on uh, multiple systems talking to each other. We have cautiously invested in creating large network that connects to uh, all large data centers, all key data centers across India. Our data centers are connected through fiber. Uh, in, in all key metro cities, those are present. Plus, in terms of scalability, we have built the campuses, uh, which are scalable for next five to six years of the growth, we can support five to six years of the growth, and we continue to invest in that. So CIFI can be a trusted partner for all BFSI customers in their digital IT infrastructure landscape. Yeah. Girish, uh, closing remarks from your side, anything that you would like to add on to what Kitesh said? Yeah, so uh, definitely. Uh, uh, one is, uh, as I mentioned, that we have uh, now grown from the standalone sites to the campus. So our campus in Delhi, our campus in Hyderabad, our campus in Mumbai, okay, is giving the uh, enormous scalability in terms of the power, the space, the network connectivity to all BFSI customers. Second thing is, uh, always CIFI has remained a trusted partner for the BFSI customers because a lot of banks are hosting their DC as well as DRs in CIFI. So that is a proud feeling for us. And definitely, uh, if I look at the existing customers and their growth, we are continually partnering with them into their business, into their growth. So uh, we are a tried, tested, and trusted partner always. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Rajendran, Anirban, Girish, and Gitesh. It was a wonderful con con uh, conversation, and I hope uh, all the delegates will take back a lot of insights uh, during this. Since we're at top of the hour, uh, you know, I will quickly move on to the Q&A uh, session. We have a lot of questions coming up, but before we get into that, one more poll question uh, that uh, we would like to take. Uh, can we have the second poll question up on the screen, please? So the question is, how far along is your organization in its IT infrastructure journey with respect to the data centers? Again, it's a single choice uh, question. So uh, get started. I mean, we are just uh, going to have this up for a few more seconds. So do take up this poll in case you haven't already. We'll wait for a little bit more time uh, for you to fill up the poll question. I hope everyone has taken the poll. I think we can take the poll offline now so that we can see what the results are. Okay, so here are the results advanced, but with ongoing improvements is uh, where most of the organizations are, that is 36%, followed by fully optimized and state-of-the-art uh, data infrastructure, data center infrastructure. And 25% uh, are moderately developed. So uh, different organizations are in different stages of this journey. So uh, great, thank you so much everyone for taking uh, this poll. And now we move on to the Q&A session. Uh, while we were having the different sessions on, I saw that a lot of questions were coming our way. Um, and uh, while we cannot take all of those questions, we will try to answer a few. And of course, for the rest of the questions, uh, I'll ensure that these questions get passed on to the panelists and uh, if they can take out time to address some of those questions later on. 
Um, so the first question is, um, do you have the DC offerings for India only or for other regions, countries by yourself or by partnership? So uh, Kirish uh, or Gitesh, if you would like to uh, take this question. Yeah. So uh, CFE is a global organization. We are an abstract district uh, organization. But although our data centers, physical data centers are based in India, we have sales teams spread across uh, various key countries uh, in Europe, US, uh, and Asian countries. But they are mainly working through our partner network. So if any specific requirement is there, please do get in touch with us. We'll, we'll, work, we'll work out the strategy uh, for the global IT strategy. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the second question is that uh, does SIFI provide a dashboard, um, like a weekly or monthly report to the BFSI clients, which covers different aspects like the access, performance, instance usage, maintenance, proactive action, carbon and green metrics. And uh, the, the reason uh, this question is being asked that this is for the BFSI organizations to report back to their boards, internal and statutory auditors and corporate customers. So do you provide that kind of a dashboard? Yeah, so uh, definitely we provide the dashboards. So uh, mainly the requirements are coming from the BFSI in terms of the real time uh, uh, infrastructure parameter viewing that. So we provide that. But additionally, uh, as I mentioned with the AIML tool, which we are building for the data centers now, we are in position to provide the analytical dashboard also to BFSI customers. Oh take uh, i'd like to take one or two questions more uh, another question is that uh, can you highlight the disaster recovery and data center locations uh, for the reference so this uh, person wants for his reference uh, if you could highlight the dr and uh, dc locations now we would need a little more brief uh, on what what is the expectation there are multiple data centers in India today that CP offers from various key cities. Any data center can be uh, primary and uh, DR uh, in another city. So depending on the specifics, we would be able to answer. Right. So I would urge... Uh person who asked this question to uh, get in touch with SIFI to understand uh, so that they can understand your requirements and accordingly answer the question. Um, the next question is that, is there any plan to implement the green energy resource in the DC environment? I think we have already, uh, so it's more of a renewable power sourcing. So we are already contracted with the uh, uh, green power sourcing, uh, 99 megawatt is already installed and other additional 231 megawatt is contracted in the delivery process. So okay. we, yes, we are on that. Yeah. Okay. So, um, you know, I don't know if we can take up any more questions, but uh, I, uh, Gitesh and uh, Girish, I, I'm not sure if you can see the lot of questions that have come over in the Q&A session and a few of them have already been answered by your team, but there are still many more. Uh, if you can, uh, you know, take up these questions offline and answer some of those, we will uh, try to make these questions available to both of you. And uh, with that, uh, we would like to end with yet another poll, uh, which is going to be around the question, can we please have the poll on the screen? So what is your current stance on utilizing external data center services? Again, it's a single choice question. If you can share, what is your current stance on utilizing external data center services? If you haven't taken the poll already, we have a few more seconds so you can choose your answer. We'll have the poll uh, for a few more seconds up on the screen. It would be great if you take the poll. It would be good to, for us to understand uh, what is the current stance of your organization. So if everyone has answered, can we take the poll off screen? And uh, now let's see what the results are. Okay, so uh, 
Majority are open to using co-location services, followed by already heavily reliant on external hosting services, followed by prefer to keep everything in-house. So we see that co-location services um, is hands down the, uh, the stance for majority of the organizations. Great. So kind of uh, Gitesh and Girish, do you kind of see this as expected? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Great. And yeah, that's uh, that's that's pretty much expected because everybody is now looking at service model rather than doing do, doing it themselves. So, which is good to see. Great. So, um, you know, with that, I would like to wrap up uh, this uh, webinar and thank you so much uh, to everyone for being part of this insightful session and your engagement and participation made it a valuable experience and we appreciate your time and contributions. And I would especially like to uh, thank our panelists, Dr. Rajendran, Anirban, uh, Gitesh and Girish. Uh, it was wonderful talking to all of you. And uh, while you are logging off, uh, you will have a uh, survey form which will come up on your screen. Uh, request you to please fill that up, and that will be uh, that will be very helpful to us. It will also provide us feedback. So uh, thank you so much, and thank hope you. you all have a great weekend ahead. Thank, thank you. Bye. Thank you very much.